Hello people, in this video we want to look at end ophthalmitis, okay. So basically it is end, means uh, endo also you can take it as because it is inner structures of the eye. <clears throat> Always we have studied uh, things like conjunctivitis, right, we have studied uh, things like conjunctivitis we have studied, we have studied episcleritis, we have studied scleritis, we have studied uveitis, so many itis, itis we have studied, but here it is an ophthalmitis. The entire eye kind of a thing, right? So here, uh, we are uh, actually, where are we? We are under purulent uveitis. Under that you have two things. You have end ophthalmitis and pan ophthalmitis. Pan actually is even, even worse. End ophthalmitis, uh, what and all are involved? The uveal tissue, the inner structure. So endo, right? Inner structures like the uveal tissue, like the choroid, the vitreous cavity, the, anti, uh, the anterior chamber and posterior chamber, that is the vitreous humor, aqueous humor, everything is affected. So, um, you understood what end ophthalmitis is. In pan ophthalmitis, even the remaining things like sclera, everything gets involved in pan ophthalmitis, okay. So pan means what? Everything, from front to back, everything. So, uh, pan ophthalmitis is everything, including the sclera. So, end ophthalmitis, um, uveal tissue, vitreous uh, humor, aqueous humor, etc. And it can also get associated with the retina. Fine. So, this video is about what? It is about end ophthalmitis. So, basically, this can be a complication of cataract surgery or any, any eye surgery, right? And uh, may, uh, mainly the cause because of bac bacteria like staphylococcus, etc. Okay. And uh, there will be loss of vision. You can treat this by a uh, lot of things like intravitreous antibiotics, uh, etc. So, uh, let us look at in this case, uh, end ophthalmitis. So, how is it defined? It is defined as the inflammation of the inner structures of the eyeball, that is the uveal tissue and the vitreous cavity, anterior chamber, posterior chamber, retina can be associated. So, what are they saying? The uveal tissue. So, uveal tissue will be iris, choroid, uh, so iris, ciliary body, choroid is affected, right? and uh, vitreous humor is affected, anterior chamber is affected, posterior chamber is also affected. So, all these are affected. Retina can also be associated. But what is spared, what actually is not affected? The sclera. The sclera is absolutely fine. Right? In panophthalmitis, even sclera will get involved. So, where are we? Okay, so we looked at the definition. Now, basically, before doing any eye surgery, they will give three days of um, antibiotics like moxifloxacin and getifloxacin thrice, uh, four times a day, is it QID? Four times a day for three days before surgery and uh, every 15 minutes bef uh, for two hours before surgery. Wow! To remove the conjunctival bacterial flora. And also, they will paint the eye, you can see here, they will paint the eye and the facial skin two to three hours before surgery. All these are pre-operative uh, pre antibiotics and disinfectants to prevent all this endophthalmitis. And um, they will put in the eye 5% povidone iodine. So here what and all they are talking about, uh, moxifloxacin, catifloxacin, povidone iodine 10% for painting and povidone iodine 5% drop before 10 to 30 minutes before surgery. So all this will decrease the bacterial flora uh, in the eye, around the eye. So uh, they can prevent endophthalmitis. Endophthalmitis etiology, it can be infectious or non-infectious. So, infectious definitely all the povidone iodine antibiotics will help. But do you know that there are non-infectious causes also like copper etc. Interestingly, copper etc. can be non-infectious cause. <coughs> so, let us look at the infective one. This is uh, more common, isn't it? So, Modes of infection, the, from where is the bacteria coming? It can come from outside. Exogenous infections like uh, corneal ulcer, post-operative infection. Endogenous from within yourself. Some metastatic uh, bacteria via bloodstream, it is coming from, uh, imagine from the teeth, from the caries of the teeth. Oh, wow. To, and from septicemia, from blood or poor peril sepsis. That is after childbirth, right? So, from where can the bacteria come? From outside, from inside. There is something else called a secondary infection. This is like around the um, structures, right, uh, uh, orbital cellulitis. So, around the eyeball, orbital cellulitis, thrombophlebitis, infected corneal ulcer, all those are the modes of infection. What are the organisms? We already said staphylococcus uh, uh, bacteria, staphylococcus uh, epidermidis, staphylococcus aureus. Then you have uh, propioni bacterium acne, that also you should remember, propioni bacterium acne. Then you have fungi like candida, 
all this you have to remember okay so usually you should remember staphylococcus epidermidis staphylococcus aureus okay for uh, uh, that is for early onset for late onset you have this uh, fungus and then you have this propioni bacterium okay we'll come to that so infective we have looked at now let's look at look at non infective non infective we told you like things like copper and all that right so let's look at non infective sterile endophthalmitis um so because of some toxins or toxic substances so that is what you have to remember here toxins because of toxins or toxic substances so like uh, sometimes after the uh, surgery they would have put the intraocular lens right like after cataract surgery they removed the original lens they put an uh, intraocular lens so the chemicals which are adherent to these lens can cause this issue or um, some chemicals which are adherent to instruments there is something called as toxic anterior segment syndrome the reaction is confined to the anterior segment so so it is anterior segment toxic anterior segment syndrome post traumatic um, after trauma some foreign body is there in the eye so that example copper if it is pure copper it can cause eye damage right in people with morganian cataract right the lens protein can cause phacoanaphylactic endophthalmitis phacoanaphylactic endophthalmitis may be induced by lens proteins in patient with morganian cataract so lens protein itself is causing the whole problem the pro lens the protein in the lens itself is causing issue intraocular tumor necrosis always blame a tumor at the end intraocular tumor necrosis uh, can also be called uh, masquerade syndrome it may present as sterile endophthalmitis but actually what it is it's tumor necrosis intraocular tumor necrosis may present as sterile endophthalmitis so will, the presentation will be like a sterile endophthalmitis it is masquerade syndrome <coughs> so uh, this diagram will tell you about copper so how is it going let's move on now so what and all we finished non infectious infectious everything we saw post operative acute bacterial endo uh, endophthalmitis is very important okay so <clears throat> let us look at this one in detail so fine uh, here they are just saying source of infections patient's own bacteria is coming and other source of infections will be instruments etc onset we told you acute means it will be because of staph etc delayed will be because of fungi and propioni bacterium acne okay it will be between 1 to 7 days of operation the acute onset after 1 to 7 days of eye operation symptoms so what will the person say they have severe pain in the eye redness lacrimation photophobia loss of vision they have loss of vision severe ocular pain okay then coming to signs what will you see in the signs the lids are swollen red the conjunctiva chemosis what is chemosis swelling that's all swelling edema marked circumcorneal congestion circumcorneal congestion we have also seen in anterior uva to see all this radial kind of thing around the cornea but that is on the conjunctiva so we are studying it under conjunctiva circumcorneal congestion what happens to cornea edematous cloudy ring infiltration okay edges of wound may become yellow or necrotic edges of wound becomes yellow and necrotic this we have seen right i think uh, this is pretty clear in the photo let's see this wait gaping wound also they said gaping wound uh, is there in another uh, photo wait we'll show that gaping wound see you can see wound gape in this right so that's it then uh, edges of wound become yellow and necrotic and wound may gape in exogenous form okay anterior chamber exogenous means um, the wound has opened so the bacteria came from outside something like that anterior chamber will be full of pus there will be hypopion hypopion can you see here hypopion anterior chamber pus see hypopion then iris when visible is edematous and muddy iris muddy they always like to say that pupil has yellow reflex due to purulent exudation of vitreous so vitreous has a pus right so where is the vitreous vitreous is full of pus give us a yellow vitreous is full of pus what isn't full of pus actually everything will be so vitreous also full of pus because of which what will happen there will be 
yellow reflex okay and even anterior chamber is full of pus vitreous exudation right um, there is a yellowish white mass when you see through a fixed dilated pupil you will see yellowish mass that is because of the vitreous exudation and pus this is called as amer amerotic cat's eye reflex okay so you can see here how the cat's eye um through fixed dilated pupil you are able to see yellowish white mass so it's like amerotic cat's eye reflex okay then what is the last point here let's look at the last point here intraocular pressure is usually raised in the beginning afterwards the it will stop secreting the uh, intra uh, the aqueous humor so the intraocular pressure will uh, reduce later so intraocular pressure is raised in early stages so we looked at the signs so as a uh, sign means what you will see so you will see that the lid is swollen conjunctiva is chemosed uh, cornea has some issues then what did you say um, circumcorneal congestion you will see that the wound edges are gaping um anterior chamber is full of pus hypopion iris is muddy pupil is showing yellow reflex vitreous uh, has exudates pus so there is amerotic cat's eye reflex intraocular pressure is initially raised later to be reduced because of loss or less secretion because ciliary processes are destroyed good what is left treatment treatment is left guys so treatment uh, basically uh, just overall we will tell you we will have to give antibiotics because we are focusing on the infective one so antibiotics how will you give you will directly give into the vitreous and intravitreal antibiotics then you can also give some topical uh, antibiotics systemic antibiotics okay so antibiotics you can give how intravitreal steroids also they can give then they'll give supportive therapy vitrectomy last last they are considering vitrectomy or if it's already a severe case they are considering vitrectomy removing the vitreous yes, very important this one is so antibiotic therapy guys um, intravitreal antibiotics so they are going to give it where directly into the vitreous right so directly into the vitreous they want to inject what they want to inject antibiotic so um, from the area of pars plana they are injecting they have some gauge needles and all they have mentioned here so basically you should give it as early as possible two com uh, two uh, combination of two antibiotics for gram positive and gram negative so uh, they are giving vancomycin plus uh, ceftazidime or vancomycin plus amikacin um, so what are they giving vancomycin plus ceftazidime or vancomycin plus amikacin so basically um, vancomycin is a glycopeptide antibiotic right uh, so it comes in other antibiotics group ceftazidime is a third generation cephalosporin amikacin is an amino glycoside they don't give uh, uh, gentamicin because gentamicin is uh, retinotoxic remember they don't they don't give gentamicin so other uh, other things they will do they try to collect the sample and do bacterial culture smear etc if there's no improvement they'll repeat these injections topical treatment with antibiotics also they'll do with same vancomycin cefazolin amikacin tobramycin same names topically also they are giving concentrated antibiotics concentrated antibiotics okay topical so intravitreous topical then they can also give systemic um, antibiotics but it has limited role so here they are giving what ciprofloxacin same uh, vancomycin very uh, they seem to like this vancomycin amikacin everywhere the names are repeating steroid therapy they are planning to give uh, intravitreal injection of dexamethasone again topical dexamethasone systemic same kind of things right intravitreal topical systemic then they are giving lansoprazole uh, to before giving steroids to prevent gastric um, uh, ulcers right so for gastric protection supportive therapy cycloplegics um, for pain isn't it and uh, anti glaucoma drugs like timolol acetazolamide if the pressure is high okay so that is about supportive lastly we have vitrectomy so vitrectomy what they will do they'll try to remove the vitreous if there's no response to other modes of treatment or if it's already a severe case they want to remove the vitreous okay so if he's already having reduced visual acuity that this hand movement close to face that is all he's able to see right 
So this vitrectomy will remove the organisms, it will remove the toxins, enzymes, everything. So they, are, they kind of like this. So that's all for now in this video on endophthalmitis. So taking the recap, purulent uveitis, two types, endophthalmitis, panophthalmitis. Endophthalmitis where what and all are involved, uveal tissue, vitreous cavity, anterior chamber, posterior chamber can also start involving the retina. And uh, here uh, what they do, the causes are infectious and non-infectious. In infectious you have uh, cephalococcus uh, mainly. Sterile uh, endophthalmitis could be because of some chemicals, copper, foreign body, lens protein, etc. And uh, post-operative acute bacterial endophthalmitis, that is what we will be discussing in detail here. It can be acute or delayed. Onset. Symptoms will be severe pain, loss of vision, redness, lacrimation, photophobia. And signs that you will see lids, edematis, conjunctiva, chemost, circumcorneal congestion, cornea as edematis. Edges of wound are gaping, um, anterior chamber hyperpion pus, iris muddy, edematis, pupil, yellow reflex, vitreous. Vitreous cavity is filled with exudation pus, that is amrotic, cat's eye reflex. Right, intraocular pressure initially raised, later it will drop. Treatment, antibiotics, 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 intravitreal antibiotics, topical antibiotics, systemic antibiotics, steroid therapy. Okay, mainly antibiotic therapy, you should know vancomycin. What is the other one? Ceftazidime, vancomycin or amikacin. These are the combinations. Then um, you will send it for culture, find out the organism. Topical antibiotics also you will... Um, See, you will collect the specimen of the discharge and all before giving antibiotics, okay? So, topical antibiotics, vancomycin, cefazolin, amikacin, tobramycin, systemic antibiotics, limited role, steroid therapy, dexamethasone, intravitreal, topical, then they will give lansoprasol before the steroid, okay? But anyways, it's not steroid therapy. Before the steroid, they will give that. Then... Supportive will be psychoplegics and uh, anti-glaucoma drugs like thymolol and acetazolamide. Cycloplegics will be atropine homotropy. Vitrectomy. So if the patient does not improve um, with intense therapy uh, for 48 to 72 hours or when the patient presents with severe infection where the visual acuity is reduced to hand movement close to face, then you will do vitrectomy. You will remove the vitreous mass which contains organisms, toxins, enzymes, etc. So that's all for now in this video on end of palmitis. Bye-bye.